Knowing what we know now, what would you have done? I would have not engaged. I would not have gone into Iraq. But that's, that's a huge flip from what he said on Monday. Knowing what we know now, would you have authorized the invasion? I would have, and so, so would have Hillary Clinton, just to remind everybody. Saying he had misinterpreted the question, Bush tried again Tuesday with radio host Sean Hannity. So in other words, if in 2020 hindsight, you would make a different decision? Yeah, I don't know what that decision would have been. That's a hypothetical, but the simple fact is mistakes were made. There is nothing that makes a political operative more happy to the point of wringing their hands with glee than when the opponent takes the bait and gets pulled into a trap from which there is either no escape or the enemy can't figure out how to get out of the jam. And Democrats right now have to be celebrating how named and possible Republican presidential hopefuls are completely trapped in the muck and mire of a ridiculous question that does nothing to help any of them get elected. And it's been for the left for so many years, it is now all about blaming the Bush administration. Let's get down to business. Our first guest, media columnist for The Washington Post, Eric Wemple, joined by Dan Joseph from the Media Research Center. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Good evening, Ed. Eric, I'm going to go ahead and start with you seriously now. Have you ever seen people, supposed experts, uh, professional politicians, if you will, who are so vexed by what is really a trap question? And in many ways, Michael Rubio and Jeb Bush got it right when they basically covered the question. Well, I mean, I think that uh, it is important to specify exactly what you're talking about, but I, I don't know that it's a trap question. I think it's in terms of coming to grips with what happened um, and in terms of coming to grips with what the intelligence was, I think it's actually a pretty fair question to say, knowing what we know now, would you have gone into Iraq? Um, if yeah, but you try the, way to it was, the way it was taken, though, it really seems as if even Rubio gave the right, the right answer where he said, look, what we knew then, if we knew it then, with all the intelligence, then me would have gone in. I think they both answered the question. Right. Well, I think that, uh, yeah, and I think the media has significant uh, complicity or, or culpability in that whole situation, too. I think the media failed to do its job. So, you know, it's, it's as good a question to pose to a media figure as it is to a politician. <laughs> All right. Well, then, then let's take the question from there. Dan, I get it to you, because is this a trap? And do you think the Democrats are having a great time? Because over the weekend, that's all that the, the discussion was about with the GOP hopefuls, was about this question, not about how they would get elected and what to do about American policy. Sure, it, It's definitely a trap, and the liberal media keeps using it because they want to sort of change the narrative as to what happened in the lead-up to war. I mean, let's, let's be honest about this. There was really a consensus nationwide and worldwide about Saddam's weapons of mass destruction. The problem with this is that the fact that there's a guy named Bush who was running for the presidency has turned this into a much bigger issue than it ever would have been if he wasn't running. And his flubbing of the question, you know, I thought Marco Rubio gave, gave the right answer to it the first time. I thought Jeb Bush, whether he misunderstood the question or not, uh, unfortunately gave the incorrect answer. So it's, it's not incorrect politically wise. So yeah, they're going, to, they're going to have to ask Hillary the same question. She already has an answer for it. It's a totally acceptable answer for the media. But I'd like to hear Hillary Clinton answer, hey, you know what, if you knew ISIS was going to come in and, and take over uh, half of Iraq, would you have left Iraq prematurely and, and taken all the troops out there right away? Uh, I don't know how she'd answer with that, but I think it would be an interesting thing to ask. Uh, how dare you come up with another trap question here, Dan? Let's not do that. That's not what <laughs> yeah, we're about. A, well. All right, guys, two minutes that we have left here. Let's talk about George Stephanopoulos. This was a mistake by Stephanopoulos, undoubtedly. However, even Carol Simpson of ABC News says, wait a minute, he's not really a journalist. They're trying to bury this. Simple question is, should he be fired at the worst, or does he need to at least pull himself out of the Sunday shows at the least, for what he has done with the Clintons and with money. Dan, to you first. Yes, absolutely. I mean, he needs to recuse himself from anything involving the 2016 presidential election. I mean, this is not the first time he's done this. He's acted as a foil for, for the Clintons and acted, you know, he attacked Peter Schweitzer while not even admitting that he gave money to the Clinton Foundation, which was the subject of his book. He has been at the, he's moderated GOP primary debates. We all remember when he talked about Rick, Sam, when he posed that ridiculous question to Rick Santorum about birth control. This guy is a Clinton advocate. He has always been and he always will be. And as a result, since we have a Clinton in the race right now, he needs to recuse himself, especially since she's the front this runner. Is, Eric, this you is go really ahead, 45 seconds. This is a, 
I, th I think this is a really big transgression, as I've written in my own uh, space. You know, the thing is that it definitely gives at least the appearance that he was looking for access, and I think the donations give him a certain stake in this foundation and a stake in the Clinton family, and I think it's, it's problematic uh, from top to bottom. Well, then let's just do this very quickly, answer from both of you then, Eric. The fact that he has admitted to giving in this money, the fact that he is part of the news media, should he then be taken off all of these shows, period, knowing that what he's done in the past, what he may do in the future, is is slanted. Um, I think I am not quite to that point yet. You know, I, I generally give people with one uh, transgression a little bit more, uh, okay, a, a little bit more leniency. But I am very. I think it's awful. I think it's a terrible transgression. I think something. I, I don't. I, I won't okay. tune into him. Okay, I got to stop. It. Ten right. seconds to you, Dan. Okay. You know, if he wants to stay on Good Morning America and do whatever and talk about cooking shows or talk about, you know, <laughs> culture and whatever, that's, I, I really don't have a problem with that. But if he's talking about politics, absolutely not. There Refuse you go. Dan 100%. Joseph and Eric Wemple, thanks for joining us. The Hardline continues.